His short stories are called the forerunners of European erotic novels. Many authors of modern scandalous works consider him to be their spiritual father. Boccaccio's name remained in history thanks to Decameron, the novel put on the list of the books banned by the Catholic Church. Giovanni Boccaccio, the illegitimate son of a French woman and a Florentine merchant, was born in Paris in 1313. When his father settled all his commercial business in France and returned to Florence, he took the son with him. At first, little Giovanni was sent to a Florentine merchant as an apprentice. But he had such an obvious aversion to commerce that the father allowed the son to study law and social science in Naples when the youth was 17. As the son of the court supplier, Giovanni was warmly received at the court of the king Robert Anjou. The ruler, who had the reputation for being a patron of arts, noticed the poetical gift of the youth and supported the beginner poet. The legend says that in Naples, Boccaccio fell in love with the beautiful Maria de Aquino, the king's natural daughter, and wrote poems for her. And then at the grave of the Roman poet Virgil, the enthusiastic youth vowed to devote his life to serving Bell's letters. But the flighty beauty was unfaithful to young Giovanni Long. When the poet learned about the faithlessness, he answered his beloved by writing a wrathful sonnet that was one of the most caustic exposures of women's fickleness in the Italian literature. In 1339, the Bardi banking house Boccaccio's father worked for went bankrupt and Giovanni lost his financial support. After the death of his stepmother and brother, he returned to Florence where he created his first poems based on the plots of ancient Greek myths. In 1343, he wrote the short novel Fiametta in which he sang the love of his youth, Maria di Aquino. Giovanni, who was full of love and learned a woman's soul very well, made a woman the main character of a novel for the first time in Europe and showed her feelings. In 1348, the devastating epidemic of plague enveloping the whole Western Europe reached Florence. Boccaccio ran away from the Black Death to his estate Sertaldo. Probably it was there that the idea of the novel Decameron, that is, a ten-day cycle, came to him. Ten characters of the novel, seven ladies and three young men who fled from the plague to the country, whiled away the time telling funny stories for ten days. The novel was finished by Giovanni Boccaccio in 1353. Boccaccio's famous friend, Francesco Petrarch, liked the story about Griselda so much that he even translated it into Latin. In Decameron, Boccaccio created the portrait of the Italian life during the Renaissance on the basis of folklore works, anecdotes, table talks, and tales. Real persons who were the poet's contemporaries were guest in the characters of the novel. Boccaccio assumed the classical Roman style as a basis and boldly added Italian folk speech with its juicy humor into each of the hundred stories of the novel. Many stories are full of jibes about monks who were misers, gluttons, and libertines. The most established fame that the book has is that it is considered to be an erotic novel. But even in the most scabrous fragments of Decameron, erotica doesn't turn into pornography. The author's humor, irony, and cheerfulness save the situation. Giovanni Boccaccio never aimed to publish his works. It was beneath the dignity of the respectable 40-year-old townsman to admit the authorship of light romance reading, especially as Boccaccio performed honorable diplomatic missions for the Florentine Republic for a long time and commanded the great respect of his fellow citizens. Having decided to devote himself to serious social and political journalism entirely, Boccaccio wrote the treatise on famous women in Latin and on the genealogy of the gods of the Gentiles in many volumes. But the books he worked at very hard for 20 years didn't become popular. The experts value the biographical short novel The Life of Dante Alighieri and his comments on Dante's Divine Comedy higher. 
During the last years of his life, Boccaccio's character changed a great deal. Some biographers think that he was engaged in religious searching, and others believe that numerous failures in love and emotional experiences were responsible for this. They say that the last straw was an unfortunate liaison with a Florentine widow who deceived her old admirer and made a laughing stock of him. In reply to this, the offended Boccaccio wrote the book The Crow that can be called the masterpiece of misogyny and took holy orders as if he had forgotten his caustic remarks about clergymen. The author of Decameron lived 62 years and he died in his estate near Florence where his great novel was planned. Only a hundred years later, Decameron was published for the first time immediately became popular in Italy and is still the most read novel among the literary monuments of the Renaissance. Lope de Vega, Shakespeare, Pushkin and Goethe created their works on the basis of the stories of Decameron.